A word from the Magid, just as, in a, as the summation, is a word from the Mazir Magid. It's a very powerful word. It says there's a Pasuk in Melachim, in Melachim Beis, speaks about the king wanting Elisha to give prophecy. But he wasn't in the position, he wasn't in the mood, so to speak. He wasn't in the zone. So Elisha says, I need you should bring me a menagin to sing, to play music. Yeah, when the vahaya kenagin hamenagin, when the menagin was nagin, in other words, when the musician began to play the music, so the hand of Hashem, the spirit of Hashem, rested on Elisha. So the Magad of Mizrich once said, What's vayihi kenagin hamenagin? Right? You could say vayihi kashe hischel nagin, vayihi kashe nigin. It's an interesting expression. So the Magid says as follows, that there's a deeper message here. There's a difference between a person singing and an instrument playing a song. An instrument playing a song has no ego. A violin, a guitar, a cello, a piano has no ego. Its, uh, its entire identity, so to speak, is that it's a channel for the music. Yeah, the violin doesn't get arrogant if it does a good job, doesn't get depressed if it does a bad job. The metzius of the, of the clay negin of the instrument is that it's a channel for the song. A person singing is not like that. You can ask people who sing. <laughs> it's not that people, right? I'm self-conscious. We have our fears, our insecurities, our shame. He can nagin hamenagin when the menagin became the nigan, when the menagin became completely one with the nigan. In other words, it's not the menagin is singing the song. It's that the menagin is just, a, he's like an instrument, like a musical instrument through which the song goes through. That's when the Yad Hashem dwelled on him. In other words, the concept of Ahi Kenagin menagin is when there's no self-consciousness, when the menagin is just, he's just like the instrument, like the, like the nigin itself, or like the nagin, like the, the clay hanigin. There's no ego, there's no chatzitza, there's no separateness. So then the energy of the nigin flows through him. There's no separation. I think this is one uh, very relevant application of what we were learning about, what er means. But let's summarize. Let's summarize the Nakuda. But very, very bekitzer because uh, we had Shear 2 and Shear 3. So those who want to review can review it. And it's intense, it's elaborate, it's intricate. But just to summarize the point. There's a machloikas on Mekobalim. There's a big machloikas of the Mekobalim. When you say Ein Seif, which means the infinite one, if it's Keser or Atzmos. Now it sounds like a strange machloikas, like... <laughs> But in Kabbalah, it's a very serious argument. If the word Ein Soif refers to Keser, which means the crown or Hashem's will, or it refers to Hashem's essence. According to Reb Moshe Cordovero, the Ramak, who was one of the greatest Kabbalists in Jewish history, passed away 1570, Shin Lamed, Chav Gimel Tamas, buried in Svaz, he says Ein Soif is Atzmos. Ein Soif is Hashem himself. That's the term he used for Hashem himself, the infinite one. A disciple of the Ramak, who lived a generation later, known as the Rameh, the Rameh Rabbeinu Menachem Azariah Afanu, who lived in Italy, one generation later. In his Svarim, Pelach Harimain, Yoinus Ilim, he has many Svarim on Kabbalah. He was from the city Fanu in Italy. He argues, and he says that Ein Soif is not Hashem himself. Ein Soif refers to Hashem's name, Hashem's crown, Hashem's rotsen, Hashem's desire. And his taina is that if Ein Soif was referring to Hashem himself, the title should have been Ein Loit Chila. He has no beginning. Not that he has no end. Because you can have something that has a beginning, but it doesn't have an end. Hashem wants something to extend uh, everywhere and to exist every, through every time eternally. It can have Ein Soif. It can be Ein Soif. Ein Loit Chila is a much bigger Chiddush. In other words, you can have no end, but you have a beginning. You have a source. You have a progenitor. You have a creator. Yeah, a name has the master of the name, Baal Hashem. He says, Ein Soif is Atzmos, then you should have a different name, Ein Leit Chil. Ein Leit Chil is much deeper, because Kol Kadmai Nitzchi, we like Kol Nitzchi Kadmai, right? Everything that's eternal, 
everything that's eaten, everything that is a kadman, everything that has no beginning, its existence is from itself. Nobody created it, automatically it's eternal. Because nothing is going to stop it. But you could be eternal and still have a beginning. Kol kadmai nitzchi, veloi kol nitzchi kadmai. As he brought earlier in the Maimah. So therefore the Ramah argues with the Ramak and he says, Ein Saif is not referring to Atmos. Ein Saif is referring to Hashem's name, Hashem's Ratzin, it's called Keser. This is the Ramez, Ramez opinion. To put the argument in a little bit in different words, the way he says it in the Maimer, according to the Ramak, Oyr Ein Saif means the Oyr of the Ein Saif. According to the Ramah, Oyr Ein Saif means the Oyr is Ein Saif. According to the Ramak, Oyr Ein Saif means when it says in Kabbalah, the Oyr of the Ein Saif. It's the Oyr that comes from the source, which is the Ein Saif. The Ramah says, no, no, the source is not Ein Saif, it's Ein Leit Kila. Oyr Ein Saif means the Oyr itself is the Ein Saif. Because the Atmos, the source of the Oyr is Ein Leit Kila. Which is much deeper than, than Ein Saif. This is a big argument in Kabbalah between the Ramak, the Ramak and the Ramah. Now, the Ramah has a big taina. So the Rebbe Rashab in his Maimer, Vayoylech Tofresh Samachvav, in the famous Hemshech Tofresh Samachvav, there's a Hemshech called Hachaydish, and which is from this Parsha, Parsha's boy, Hachaydish Azal Lechem. And over there, he goes on, this boy, and then there's the Maimer, Vayoylech Hashem Esayom Beruach Kadam Azakalayla, which is, which is for, of course, a Pasuk from Parsha's Beshalach. So in Vayoylech, the Rebbe Rashab explains the view of the Ramak, the view of the Ramak. I mean, the Ramak didn't understand that uh, Hashem is in Leit I mean, It's not like these questions, I understand them, and the Ramak didn't understand them. Yeah, obviously, he had a different view. So the Rebbe Rashab explains at length that there's two ways how you can describe Ein Saif. Ein Saif means it has no Gvul, and Ein Saif it has no Geder. Ein Saif usually means it's infinite. So it means it extends everywhere, every place, every time. In other words, there's no time that's devoid of it. You'll say, less hasar ponimine, there's no place devoid of him. It ain't safe in every place. You'll say, he's nitzchi, chay ad v'kayim lanetzach, that's in zman. Ain't safe means, whether in time or in space, there's no limit to it. There's no safe, there's no end. It's not like this place is not going to be there. In English it's called omnipresent, right? Present everywhere. Omniscient, knows everything. Eternal, limitless, timeless. Ain't safe. That's the Ramez ain't safe. The Ramak's ain't safe is a different ain't safe. The Ein Saif, that doesn't, not that it doesn't have a Saif, it doesn't have a limit in terms of expansion. Ein Saif means it has no definition. When you say Ein Saif, it has no Saif, it doesn't only mean in space or time. It means there's no way of describing it, there's no way of defining it. There's no way, not even in terms of expression, of manifestation. So the Ramah, Ramak is talking about a different Ein Saif. The Ramah is talking about a different Ein Saif. So not really, it's not a fundamental agreement where the two can't meet. It's that there's a different definition of Ein Saif. This is a long Maimer in Samach. Vov the Rebbe Rashab, the Rebbe Rashab is Mazber. Now, why is this so relevant here in Basi Lagani? So as I told you last week, generally Chsidis, especially Chsidis Chabad, beginning with the Alter Rebbe, reconciles the, many of the big arguments in Kabbalah. Right. We spoke about Kosov HaShlishi, showing that each perspective, there's an argument, because each view brings out a different nekuda, but ultimately there is reconciliation. What does Chassidus say? What does the Alter Rebbe say about this? The Alter Rebbe says that Ameh is right. Ein Saif is the Oyr. Oyr Ein Saif means the Oyr itself is Ein Saif. doesn't mean the Ramak is wrong. <laughs> the Ramak was G'dayli Amma Kabbalah. Sometimes Oyr Ein Saif means the Oyr of Ein Saif. But it's true, at least here, at least in many places, Oyr Ein Saif means the Oyr itself is Ein Saif. No. <laughs> the Oyr itself is Ein Saif. Bemele, the Ramak, the Ramez question is answered because you don't say Ein Leit Chili, you say Ein Saif because you're talking about, you're talking about the Oyr. However, the reason the Eid is Ein Saif <laughs> includes the Ramak also. The Eid is Ein Saif, but the Ein Saif is Atmos. <laughs> so you're contradicting yourself, so you're not. Because Al-Tarebbe said that the Chiddush of Eid is, 
And here we're just using the word. Since Eir me'en ha'mayr, since Eir, the definition of Eir is that it's a continuum, it's a revelation, it's a transmission of the Meir. It's called Eir me'en ha'mayr. Eir is davag b'mayr, it's one with the Meir. And its definition is that it projects, it brings out the Meir. So therefore, Eir, the Ein Seif of Eir, is not just the Ein Seif of Eir on its own. That's not what Eir is. The Ein Seif that comes out in Eir is the Ein Seif of the source. It's a carrier. It's a, carrier. It's a transmitter. No, yeah. That Eir doesn't have that. Ein Seif is Ein Seif. He agrees that it's Eir Ein Seif, right? The Ramak says Eir Ein Seif means the Eir of the Ein Seif. Which means? Yeah, so the Eir, the Eir is what you would call light. It's Megala. What is it Megala? It reveals what is revealed, what could come into revelation. That which could come into revelation. That which lends itself to the term Gilui. And Gilui, by definition, means something that's experienced, it's perceived, it's manifested. Which that's what Eir means. When we describe Eir physically, when we think about light, what is it? It allows us to see. Right? Things are here with light or without light. Without light, I can't see it, I can't perceive it, it's not known, it's not experienced. It is, it is in and of itself. That's the metaphor. What does Eir do? Eir allows someone outside to be able to look at it, to be able to enjoy it, to be able to experience it, to be able to perceive it. Okay, that itself, there's you know, so many different levels of how much I perceive and how much I experience. But that's the concept of Ur. So Ur means, by definition, that which can be perceived, can be experienced, can be seen. That is Ur, that's its function. It brings it out. It brings it out to where? Yeah, to a place where it wasn't there before. The Ur brings out the light of the sun, allows me access to it, or whatever else emits light. Everything emits light. The question is if I could see it or not. We spoke about most of the universe is invisible, but everything emits light. But the light of the sun, or the light of the moon, or the light of a candle, these are types of objects that our eye perceives the light, and therefore we perceive the source. Here we're saying something deeper. And that is, and this is the, the real Nekud and the Chiddush of this Maimah. And what the Alter Rebbe explained about Eir is, that the Eir is taka ein soif means the Eir is ein soif. But what do you mean that the Eir is ein soif? Not that the ein soif of the Eir is mitzad the Eir, but the, the, the power of the Eir is that it captures the ein soif of Atzmos, which is beyond the Gedder of Eir. Now what does this mean? And Lamein Afkemina, where does this come out? Where does it express itself? To put it in different words, we said Atmos is ein leitchila, right? Eir is yesh leitchila, because Eir has a source. But since Eir is really me'ein hamoyer, so Eir embodies in it, Eir transmits even the nekud in Atmos that ein leitchila. So even though Eir does have a beginning, this is where the Ramak, this is the Chiddush over the Ramak, even though Eir doesn't, and the Chiddush over the Rameh, that even though Eir has a, be- Eir has a beginning, but because Ur may ain't hamoyer, so the Ur captures the nekud in the moyer, even that, ain't let chil doesn't have a beginning. Even that comes out in Ur. And the ramifications of this are expressed throughout the whole Mimer. From the highest place all the way to the lowest space. Each sif, he continues to explain the ramifications. Now, first we have to understand what this means. Second, we have to understand Lamain of Kemina, like where does it express itself? Vasat ge'egbe dal terebbe, why dal terebbe, what, you know, what pushed dal terebbe to say this? So the nekuda that we brought out earlier is that oir is a paradox. On one hand, oir is nothing. <laughs> what do I mean it's nothing? It doesn't have its own identity, its own substance. To give the example of the mirror, when I'm looking in the mirror, right, what did I give the mirror? I gave the mirror something substantial of me? No, nothing. There's nothing in the mirror. You can go to the mirror. <laughs> There's nothing there, right? 
And the moment I walk away, there's nothing left in the mirror. It's not like the reflection is going re- to remain there. Because Lechatchila, there was nothing there. It was just my reflection. I didn't give the mirror something. It's not like Shefa. We spoke the difference of Ur and Shefa, right? Shefa, I gave you something substantial. It's like Shifa Smaim Tekasek. I poured water into your cup. I gave you something substantial. Ur, I didn't give you anything substantial. Shefa is like a teacher giving a student something. It's a tar- targeted, it's designated to him. It's tailor-made, it's custom-made. Even when the teacher is gone, could be even after his passing. The student holds on to something forever. It's not like the mirror. You gave nothing to the mirror. That's oy. You, on the other hand, the mirror captures everything that's in the source. <laughs> the mirror is an accurate... If, if I'm looking in the mirror and you're looking at my reflection in the mirror, what do you see? You see the perfect truth. You see the perfect... On one end, you saw nothing. There's nothing there. There's no substance there. There's no shefa. Yeah, that's the mile of shefa. Shefa, you actually gave something substantial. Shifa smayim. I gave you a cup of water, and it's missing from the source. I pour water from a pitcher into a cup. That water was depleted from the source. Oh, it's not depleted. It's not like I'm diminished because of my reflection in the mirror. Like you have less of me. It's like, oh, that's too much. This is a copy of me. It's not a copy. It's fine. A teacher is teaching. It occupies him. If the mirror is in front of me, not in front of me, it doesn't make a difference. I may not even know there's a mirror. Yeah? Somebody takes a picture of me. The same could. I don't know. I may not even know. It's not taking up anything from the source. It's not depleting the source. Why? Because there's the no substance in it. On the other hand, because of the, 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 the my love shef, it also has a chisarin. The chisarin is, it captures a certain dimension, which is condensed, which is filtered, which is restricted. The mirror, you have everything. This is a mushal, it's only a mushal, these are physical mushalim, to bring out the Indian of Ur, that that Ur gives us access to everything in the source. That's the Chiddush of Ur. But what do you mean it gives access? What, what, what do you mean it gives access? Atmos, Hashem's essence, has no definition, has no description. We don't even use on it the word existence. We don't use on it the word finite. We don't use on it the word infinite. As the Rebbe Rashab says there in Samachvav, Shlila Sagvul, Shlila Sabligvul, Shlila Sachiyov, Shlila Sach, Shlila Umemele Yashbei Hakel. We don't say it's finite, so say it's infinite. You don't say it's infinite. Say it is, you don't say it is. Say it's not, you don't say it's not. You don't even say it's not, not yes, or not, not, not. In other words, I have no words, I have no description. All terms of experience and existence is already a chiddush of ayr. This is all experience, existence. It's tangible, yeah? We say something exists. Even spirituality, it exists. It's transcendent. These are all oisias that don't apply to atzmos. What do you mean they don't apply in atzmos? Atzmos is a source for it, but it can't be described by it. can't be defined by it. The, the Rambam calls Hashem, Metziyas bilti metziyas nimtza. Matsu yivaloibah metziyas. A non-existential state of existence. <laughs> That's his lashon. Metzias bilti metzias nemtza. I'm calling it an existence because what should I call it? Non-existence. You're going to get the wrong impression. You'll think I'm an atheist. But really, the word existence is as good as the word non- non-existence. Is that matzui v'loyba metzias? It's a metzias, but the only reason we're calling it a metzias is because what else should I say? Yeah. What else should I say? I say it doesn't exist. Okay. <laughs> In fact, it may be more accurate because the way I de- Taka doesn't exist the way I describe existence. Yeah, so it's 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 mitzias, but it's built in mitzias nimtza, built in mitzias nimtza. It's not defined by any properties of mitzias, including the idea that we say yeah, it, it, it the word it. Right? What does it mean? Everything is it. Yeah, this is an it, and I'm an it, and everything is it. Existence. What's included in the word existence? What's not? What's included in the world word reality? Is my shirt included in reality? Yeah. Is the coffee bean included in reality? Yeah. Is this house? Yeah. And the mic also. What's not included in the word reality? My thoughts and my feelings and my emotions and my fantasies and my hallucinations and my fears and my love. Everything is included in the word reality. And we call it real, but that's all Metzius. Physical, not physical, tangible, intangible, very spiritual, extremely transcendent. Here we're saying Metzius built in Metzius. Can I capture this? <laughs> What's Ayr? Ayr is Metzius Nimtza. Because what's Ayr? Ayr means light. What does light mean? Light means there is perception. Something is seen. Something is perceived. There's some form of you're being experienced. You're being seen. That's what light does. So as comes down to Rebbe and this is what the Rebbe Rashab explains in Samachvav. This is the Nekud of the Maimer. 
that because of the bittel of Ur to the Moyer, because the definition of Ur is, what's the definition of Ur? The Ur is the only Metzius in the world that says, I'm not a Metzius. <laughs> the definition of the Metzius of Ur is, I have no definition. My identity is, I have no identity. He doesn't say, I don't have an identity, because then you don't need Ur, you have Atzmas. Ur says, my identity is that I'm just your light. I, I don't exist. In other words, the moment you talk about me, you're not in Ur, you're in a different place. You're in Shefa, you're in different places. As I told you the first time, Ur has no identity crisis. Why doesn't it have identity crisis? To have an identity crisis, you have to have an identity, right? <laughs> People who don't have an identity in a good way. <laughs> this is why I said, he kenagen hamenagen. Right? The violin doesn't have an identity crisis in the middle of a concert. They like me, they don't like me, they're going to hire me, they're not going to hire me. I think I said once there. I once met somebody, he was a big artist, he was a musician, he played in Carnegie Hall, and I asked him, how do you know you're successful? In the middle of a concert, what's called success? So he told me, if I'm playing, and I'm not present. If I'm not present, that's success. My fingers are just a channel for the music. Now, that's a dogma for vayhiken nagin hamenagin. Sometimes artists perform. It could be in the middle of playing basketball, could be painting, could be communicating, could be writing, could be speaking, could be singing. And you're full of self-consciousness. What are they thinking? What are they not thinking? Anybody relates to this? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. You relate to this? Yeah. <laughs> you don't even have to be an artist for this, right? <laughs> you don't have to be an artist to have self-consciousness, yeah? This is, this is, what, this is what happens. The, but the violin doesn't have this problem. <laughs> Why not? Not because he's stupid, <laughs> right? Not because he's stupid, because he transcends it, because pshittas. Okay, so a violin is not a chiddush, he's a daimim. The chiddush is like, he can nagin ha menagin, when the menagin, that's, that's, that's a, that's a mushal for oir and avoida. I have no identity. So what, who am I? But I'm oir, I am oir. Oir is something. Is it something or is it nothing? The answer is, this is oir. The answer is, the somethingness of oir is that it's nothing. That's the Chiddush of Ur. It's something, but what's the definition of it? That it's nothing. That is its definition. The Metzius of Ur is that it has no Metzius. That is its definition. In other words, its Metzius is that I am here just to bring out, to transmit, to carry that which I come from, the source. That's complete bittel of Ur. Because of that, Ur has the ability to carry, so to speak, not just the source, which is reflected in Ur, which is captured through revelation. But what's Taka the reason that there's Ur? The reason there's Ur, as he says later in the Maimur, is because Atzmus, Hashem's essence, be It has the capacity to express itself. It also has the capacity not to express itself. There was no need for Ur. If Hashem didn't want Ur, there wouldn't have been Ur. What would the world look like without Ur? There would be no relationship. Ur is the beginning of all relationship. Ur is the beginning of all connection. It is the beginning of the I being perceived by the other. That's the beginning of it. In the ultimate source, then it comes down many levels. Hashem has a capacity for Ur. He has a capacity for no Ur. So when the Ur comes out, because of the Ur, bittel to the source, and the definition of Ur is that it's Davag B'mayr Me'ein Ha'mayr, so therefore the Ur doesn't just capture the, the Gilui of Atmos. The Ur captures something deeper. The Ur explains, I mean, to use the Lashonis and the Maimer later, the Ur shows that the reason I'm here is because Yechal Toi Because Hashem has the capacity to reveal Himself. The fact that He has the capacity to reveal Himself comes from the same capacity not to reveal Himself. It's the same capacity. Atzmus has Yechalus to express, Yechalus not to express. So the fact that I'm expressing myself is not because I have to express myself. It's because of my capacity to express myself, which is one with my capacity not to express myself. So Oyd is capturing the Yechailus. If it's capturing the Yechailus, it's also capturing the fact that I could not express myself. So that also comes out in Oyd. So Oyd could also express its ability to not to be... Yeah. So Oyd expresses the truth. What's the truth? The truth is he doesn't have to express himself. So Oyd never gets stuck in Oyd. Because he's real. Oyd never takes himself seriously. Because Eid is real. So what does he express? He expresses the truth. I don't have to be expressed. So why am I expressed? Because I can be expressed and I can be not expressed in the same way. Expression is no more real than lack of expression, but it's also no more false. And Eid expresses that. 
So Mele, it expresses also the expressionless dimension of Atmos. It expresses also the darkness of Atmos. You hear? You understand? Okay, good. <laughs> huh? You know, I come into the room, I don't have a choice that you shouldn't see me. Because everything comes with oil already, it's a package deal. Yeah? You don't want to, I should see you, stay home. If you're going to come out, we're going to see you. you know, right? We don't say, oh, you're here and your oil is here. We don't distinguish anymore between the two. But in the Shoirish, yeah, in the Shoirish, oil is a Chiddush. Oil is a Chiddush, it has a source. What's the Chiddush? The Chiddush is that Atzmus allows, it wants... That reality, or that which is beyond reality, should be experienced. Now, what does it mean that which is beyond reality should be experienced? That's called reality. <laughs> the shayrish of the word reality is ayr. What's reality? Reality is some form of, of talking about existence. That's the beginning of that is ayr. Atmos I can't talk about. I can't even talk about the fact that I can't talk about it, because I have nothing to say. It precedes any definition, including the definition that it precedes definitions. So I'm trying to say something, but I'm not saying it because I don't know what to say. Right? Oyer is already a beginning of conversation. Oyer translates mitzias, bilti mitzias, nimtz into mitzias. Because that's what Oyer means. Oyer means there's a form of revelation. What's revelation? Revelation means there's a form, I can perceive it, I can grasp it, I can see it. Because Ur, because Ur's definition is that it's nothing but pointing to its source, so it doesn't have recognition of Atmos, but in its, in its bittel to Atmos, it captures not just that which lends itself to expression, which is a very limited form and very limited reality, but rather, this is the big chiddush of Ur, that Ur's Ein Saif is, it's the Ein Saif of Atzmus that comes out in Ur. In other words, even the Ein Leit Chila, even the fact of Atzmus that it has no beginning, because it has no definition and therefore it has no beginning, it's a completely different type of Metzius, even that can be brought out in Ur. That's the chiddush of the, Ur, the Bittl of Ur. The Ur captures, how is there Ur? Because Hashem has a capacity it's called Yechal Toilohoyer. He has a capacity, right, to reveal himself. He has a capacity to be. You don't have to say reveal himself. He has a capacity to be. That's already uh, The word Hashem has the capacity to be, <laughs> to exist. That's uh, That capacity to be is not forced. It's not essential. It's not it has to be that way. It's part of his infinite Yechalos. He could be Loh, he could be. He could be not, <laughs> he could not be, he could be not, he could be. All three things, be, be not, not be. Because of this, there's also the capacity of Ur. So Ur, which is completely loyal and dedicated to the source. Ur's substance is that it has no substance outside of the source. So Ur says this, the reason I'm here is not that I essentially have to be here. I'm expressing his capacity to be. To be expressed, which is the same as his capacity not to be expressed. So Ayyad expresses also that which can't be expressed, the expressionless. The fact that Atmos has the capacity to express comes from the same fact that he has expressed. Of course. Of course. How does, but, I, but I don't understand how Ayyad could express um, the capacity to not express itself. I understand that it could express, express its capacity to express, but... Because, oh, good. <laughs> very good, very good. The zog is good. The zog is good. The rabbi equates that with darkness? Huh? The rabbi equates that with darkness? I'm using the word darkness. That Ur captures also the darkness of Atmos, the, the, the absence, the Yechalte Shaloi Lahaya. I'm using the word darkness. In other words, since the Yechalus Lahaya and the Yechalus Shaloi Lahaya is one thing, it's not two separate things. It's one thing in Atmos. And what's the definition of Ayr? The definition of Ayr is yeah, that I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm manifesting, I'm transmitting the Nikud of Atmos. So a Mele in Ayr comes out 
not just Hashem's Yechoyles to express Himself. Because the expression is coming from where? From the same place where there's an ability not to express Himself. So Ur brings out also the fact that I don't exist even as Ur. That's also, that's also given out in Ur. Because Ur, because Ur never becomes something. <laughs> when you become something, you have this crisis. It never becomes something. When you become something, now you have to ask yourself, who am I, who am not? I told you, in Ur, there's no identity crisis. So why are you differentiating between Ur and Atmos? You differentiate between Ur and Atmos because... I'm smiling because it's a good question. I'm not smiling because it's a bad question. <laughs> you differentiate between Ur and Atmos because we're having a sheer about it. That's the differentiation. You understood what I just said? Lamainaf Kemina. So the Rebbe brought out that this is what the Rebbe brought, set, wrote in his last letter in uh, Geris HaKadr Simen Chaf. That our world, our world, Olam Haza, comes from Atzimus directly. That's the reason why Olam Haza is the only world that feels that it has no source. Even if we understand that we have a source, but we feel we have no source. In our experience... We are completely autonomous, completely independent. I don't feel I have a progenitor. Even though the MS is, everything has a source. We call this world Yesh Me Ayin. Why something from nothing? It's nothing. Hashem is nothing. We call it nothing because in our world it's not a Metzius. God is not a Metzius in our world. Put him in every laboratory, under every telescope, and every microscope. You won't find him. It took thousands of years to discover viruses, fungi, atoms, electrons, all these things. We didn't have the tools, right? What about Hashem? Somebody once said, uh, it was a famous philosopher in France, so he once said, uh, an astronomer, sorry, an astronomer, so he had the biggest telescope, most sophisticated telescope. He says, I looked everywhere, I looked throughout the whole cosmos, and I didn't find God. I didn't find God. So there was a violinist who responded, and he said, the other day, I wanted to see what's inside my violin. So I broke it apart into small particles, and it was completely splintered, and then I put every piece under a microscope, and I couldn't find music. <laughs> right? I couldn't find music. That was, that was his response. <laughs> In the world of the telescope or the microscope, there's no music. <laughs> Or to put it differently, the eye never saw itself. I don't think anybody's eye ever saw itself. It's the source of everything else you see. But my eye never saw it. I could see your eye, but I never saw my eye, unless I'm looking in a mirror. <laughs> we call it yesh ayin because in our world, it, it's not a metzius. It does, it's not a metzius. I don't see it, I don't touch it, I don't feel it, not with my five choshim, and not even with my deeper choshim. Love, I could say, is a metzius. A svara. So we call it ayin. Not that it doesn't exist. In my world, I call it not metzius. So it's yesh, me ayin. That's what I call elikus. I could talk about it. I can prove it. I could try to prove it. We can explain this. We can, but intuitively, it's not a metzius. You see, chesidus acknowledges everything that happens. It's a substitute. So that's yesh, me ayin. So al Rebbe says, where does that come from, Taka? Where does that Metzius come from? That we should call a Lakus Ayin. It doesn't exist in any other world. Not in Ghana. No world calls a Lakus Ayin. Nothing. Only here. Why? So he says, because this world comes Taka from Atmos. And Hashem, in his essence, Taka has no source. <laughs> so we feel the same way. <laughs> we feel we have no source. Where's my source? Ayin, sorry. Not registered, I never got the memo. No yesh ever got a memo that it comes from anywhere. Why? 
because you embody Atmos. And Atmos Taka doesn't come from anywhere. Hashem is Mitsuyusim Atmosai. The only thing in the world that doesn't have a source. Taka, there's no there's no source. It's Taka Ayin. <laughs> it's Yesh Me Ayin in a real sense. Where does it come from? Does it come from anywhere? Mitsuyusim Atmosa. And Oilam Haza got that gift. Because you can't, every, every product reflects its creator, right? I, give, I create that which I have. That which I don't have, I can't create. So all the divine energies, when they bring things into existence, they give them what they have. They feel they have a source. So their products feel they have a source. Everything feels they have a source. But Olam Haza has this direct link that it embodies Atmos. But Mele doesn't feel like it has a source. Because that kid comes from a place that doesn't have a source. That's the Chiddush of Olam Haza. That's what the Rebbe says in the Geris HaKadr Semen Chaf. But the Alter Rebbe says that the Briya happened through Ur. <laughs> the Briya happened through Ur. The Ur went into Kalim, as he explained. So Kalim gives the structure of the universe, the Hagbala. But the Atmos, the Briya happened through Ur. Question is, what do you mean the Briya happened through Ur? Ur has a source. <laughs> if Ur has a source, Olam Haza had to feel it. Ah, but if you say... That Eir, because of the bittle of Eir, it captures the Nikud of Ein Loit Chila. That's also an Eir. So the Mela, Eir gives in Toilam Hazard, the Hergish of Ein Loit Chila. I have no beginning. I have no source. Is there, is there a reason why you have to go through Kiddush Ashus? You can't just create Eir and Hazard immediately. I don't know if it's off topic. You're saying, so skip everything. Just go straight from Atmos, yeah? Straight to Elam and Gendik. Boom. It's the same, ask a deeper question. Skip or two. Let Atmos create Elam and Gendik. Then how about good and tug? <laughs> these simple questions are the best questions. <laughs> right? What do you, we need all these pulpulim and shpulpai? My head, I just... But Eish is Baruch Hashem as a Shmaim v'Sar. It's again dekt. Ah. Oh. So this is where where the where yeah you you're answering well. The whole point of Seder Hishtalshlus is that the relationship should be on our terms. Ah. Huh? Yeah. The whole idea of Seder Hishtalshlus is the relationship. Hashem could do whatever He wants. He could create, He could not create, He could create whatever He wants. Gashmi, Ruchli, Mitzvahsim, Atzmus, there's no rules. We just said in Atzmus there's no rules. There's not even the rule of Ur. Right? You're right. That's true. He could have done whatever He wanted. But somewhere in the deepest place, Hashem wanted a relationship that's real. And a relationship that's real means not only that you can do whatever you want with me, but that we have a real connection. A real, real, and a real connection means a connection on my terms and on your terms. That means that I should be able to experience you and you should be able to experience me. Every element of Seder Hishtal Shalos is responsible for a different part of the human brain, for a different part of the human consciousness. Every part of Seder Hishtal Shalos is responsible for another aspect of reality. Every aspect of Seder Hishtal Shalos is the way a lakus is manifested in a particular form, in a particular gather, in a particular tzir, in a particular sphere, in a particular consciousness that gives rise to a particular experience in the world and to a particular experience within our psyche. So the whole Seder Hishtanshalus is really a mirror. <laughs> it's a mirror of all the dynamics that happen in a person. There's the Atzilus in me, Briya, Yitzir, Asiya, Adam Kadman, Ate, Kesel, Lifnat, Simtsum, Lacher, Simtsum. Literally every akudim, nekudim, brudim, every nekudim, nishtanshalus is a mirror of a certain dimension within the human soul, within the human psyche. Literally everything. And, every, and the world, everything in the world, you could point to this aspect, it's a reflection of this element of Seder Ishtarshalus, this element. There's the Soiviv in the world, and there's the Mamali in the world, and there's the Malchus in the world, and there's Chachma in the world, and there's this world, there's this element, this dimension. What's the, ta- what's the tachlus of it? The tachlis of it is that this way, the connection with Hashem is not just a connection one way. It's a connection where there's fusion, where there's complete achdos, where I can actually get you, I can experience you, I can become one with you in an internalized way, not just in a superficial way. So Seder Ishtal is what allows 
the human being's identity to connect to Hashem's identity, so to speak. Do you understand what I'm saying or not really? Huh? Now that's the concept of tzimtzum. What was tzimtzum? Tzimtzum is Hashem, so to speak, compressed himself into a world of identity, right? Into a world of where there is finiteness, where there is gvul, so that we can have a connection. We can have a relationship. I impact you, you impact me. For example, when you speak about spheris, yeah, chachma, bina, das, chesed, vurit, tiferes, what does all this mean? It means, in, in Kabbalah, it's called Hashem has a personality, Adam ha'elyon, he has a persona. If you wouldn't have a personality, I wouldn't have a personality. How, we, how do we connect to each other? We connect to each other because we reflect each other, we mirror each other, we relate to each other, we celebrate each other. You have love, I have love, you have fear, I have fear, right? You have perception, I have perception. So that's where we connect, we can, we can merge. There's a Lashen in Kabbalah, in Chassidus, that Seder Ishtal allows there to be Yidiyah Salakus, begin the Yishtamaydun line. That a person should be able to experience a lakus within his kaychas hanefesh, within his or her individual personality. So for this you have Seyed Rishtal So Seyed Rishtal is the way divinity comes into a structure so that my structured life should be able to have godliness as a backdrop. That's what Eilam Atzilus is. Eilam Atzilus is really our world. It's what our world looks like in an ideal, in an ideal fashion. What does it look like to create a world that reflects the truth of the world? So that's what Atzilus is. Atzilus is like a backdrop, you know, like an architect, a contractor uses the blueprint to be able to design a house. So Atzilus, Bri, Yitzir, Asiyah, these are different levels of designing the house. Atzilus is like the blueprint of this world. So you say, our world evolved from Yitzir, from Bri, from Atzilus. It says in Tanya that the ten kaiches of a person, Nishtal they come from the ten spheres. They could reflect the ten spheres. What does that mean, really? That the ten spheres are a backdrop, right? How a person's chachma and chesed and gvur and tiferes becomes aligned with Ein Saif, with Hashem. So that's the whole Seder Ishtal is that way. For this, Elikus went into all of these kalim, into all of these filtered and condensed into all of these features. Without it, if there would be no Seder Ishtal Hashem could do whatever He wants, but that there should be an internalized relationship that a person should uh, be able to refine themselves and uh, tune in that every feature of my personality could become a, a, a reflection of Ein Saif, that wouldn't be Shaykh. Again, Hashem could make a miracle and do whatever He wants, but I'm talking from an internalized Pnimi Yisdika way. That's why Seyed Rishtash is so important, because there's a lot going on in people's lives, right? That's your Seyed Rishtash that, that is Seyed Rishtash your morning, your afternoon, your evening, you have happy days, you have difficult days, you have days that you're up, you have days that you're down, you have thrilling days, exhilarating days, stressful days. There's a dynamic, a person is not static, a person is not lifeless, numb and dead. There's a rhythm, there's, there's a rhythm, right? What's the power of a niggin? The power of a niggin is, it's not the same note. There's a ballad, Ashir el Hashem Bechayoi, that everyone wrote to somebody in a letter. Ashir el Hashem Bechayoi doesn't only mean I sing to Hashem during my life. Ashir el Hashem Bechayoi, as I'm looking, means I sing to Hashem with my life. Life is a song. And like a song, it has ups and downs, and there's sad moments in a song, and there's beautiful and, and lively moments, there's high notes and there's low notes. It's a niggin. You don't have to amputate any part of your life, you just have to align it. Right? It's like chords of a violin. What does Rabbi Yudah Levi say? Ani kiner lishirayich about Yerushalayim, Eretz Yisrael. I am a, I am a harp for your, uh, for your melodies. Later it was taken for Yerushalayim Shal Zahav, but it comes from Yehuda Levi in his piyot, uh, what is it called? Tziyoyin haloysish ali l'shloim asirach, we say it on Tisha B'Av. So what does it mean? Ani kiner lishirayich. It means my soul is a harp for your niggin. But there's different chords that produce different nigunim. Every nekuda in a person is just another aspect of Seder Ishtal You have to fine tune it, <laughs> that it reflects elikus, so that there's complete achdos, there's complete fusion. So you don't have to run away from any part. Every nekuda, that's why you'll see there's the Ishtal Shlus of Nefesh Elikis and Nefesh Bahamas and this part of a person and that part of a person and every midah, chesed and gvura and gvura shebe gvura and tefereh shebe gvura. 
You hear, it's all another bit of a lakus. You don't have to get afraid of it. You just have to find how it's aligned. The big shayla is, yeah, is there a relationship with Hashem himself? Or it's just, you know, God's playing Monopoly with me. So he sits down on the floor and he makes believe that he takes Monopoly games seriously. That's really the Chiddush of Ur. So you could say two ways. You could say that no, Atzimus is taka his own thing and there's nothing to say over there and you know, whatever. <laughs> it's just completely removed. There's, we have no shaykhis over there. There's ain't soif, ain't leitchila, there's no get there, there's nothing. You can, he doesn't need anything, you can't do anything for him. You can't even say love, or he loves you. Uh, there was a Rosh Hashiva, and a particular yeshiva last, a few years ago before Shavu, was a mother called me, that's what I know. He asked his students in high school if, uh, if, if uh, they think that God loves them. So they all said, yeah. So he explained to them that it's apicursus. <laughs> because basic whole philosophy is, well, he loves you, so now he has needs. So he's missing something, right? Without the love, he's missing something. So it's mamash kfir and apicursus. Takin philosophy itself, there was this whole problem. Hashem is completely removed. with emotions, what is your needy, needy? Yeah. But what does that do with Havaydas Hashem? It basically says, there's no relationship, it's just for you. He gave you, he gave you a good idea, you should be able to have a good life and have Olam Haba. So as I gave a mushal, imagine, I don't mean to give anybody ideas, but imagine you're getting married, right? But before you get engaged, you turn to your wife and you say, would you like to marry me? But before you do, I just want to tell you that I don't need this. <laughs> Maybe some people do it. I don't need this, I'm perfect. But you know what? It's good for you because you won't, you won't be able to damage the relationship. Whatever you do, it doesn't matter. It's just for your sake. If you behave well, you'll have a good life. If not, you're going to have a bad life. But in terms of me, you can't touch me. You can't affect me. You know, what type of relationship is it? <laughs> so that's why in Kabbalah, there's the idea of a lakus, the tzimtzum, right? There is a relationship. The spheris, there's midis, all that. Adam ha'elion, shalakiseh. But what about Atzmus Taka? So this is where Ur comes in. This is Taka where Ur comes in. Yeah, I'm sorry. You can ask. It sounds like, yeah, it sounds like the Bishashal is just being a water down in the Ur. I'm a seal between the ultimate version. Oh. Where is the shift into? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, good, 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 good question. Good question. Good question. Good question. So we're going to get to that. So, so what's the summation of all of this? It's clear a little bit what I'm saying, huh? Or not so clear? No, very clear. It's clear. Yeah. That's what Dira B'tachtoyne means. Dira B'tachtoyne means I want to live in you, in your identity. Dira B'tachtoyne, people think, means Hashem wants you to build a house in your basement and He's going to hang out there. A girl wrote me an email a few weeks ago. She's in a Lubavitch school, and she says that she always learns that the purpose of life is Diri and she finds it to be very selfish. God wanted to build a home somewhere. Let him go build it. I have to dedicate my life to build him a home in the basement somewhere, Diri It's very, in her words, it's completely narcissistic. And my whole life has to be for that. She missed out one point. <laughs> she thinks Diri is somebody's house. It means in you. It <laughs> means in me. Right? Imagine somebody comes to you and says, listen, I have everything, but somehow I'm not satisfied. All I want for the rest of my life is I want to be with you. <laughs> that doesn't sound selfish. <laughs> That's what the, I want to be with you, but what does with you mean? With you doesn't just mean I want to live in your kitchen. For Shechanti B'Soicham, it means your identity Every feature of your identity, your personality, including your struggles, including your struggles, that's tachtoinim. Tachtoinim doesn't, is not your struggles. I just want to be with you. So that's where Seder Ishtashalos comes in. Without that, a relationship on that level would maybe be a miracle. God could do whatever he wants. Again, he also could create me and do whatever he wants and he could create a robot and, and make a... We're talking here about a relationship that is genuine, that I have to work out. Just like with two people who have a relationship. It has to be on my terms and on your terms. Right? If you don't exist in a relationship, it's not a relationship. Without Seder Ishtal Shalos, you couldn't exist in a relationship. 
You heard what I said? You understand? With Seder Ishtashalos, you exist in the relationship. You exist in the relationship. But the question is, yeah, it's on your terms. Now is it on his terms? <laughs> Is it really on his terms? Or God just says, you know, let's, let this be a fake relationship. And that's the ultimate shayla. How real is this relationship? <laughs> or to put it differently, how real is Yiddishkeit? <laughs> now this is the deepest, this is the most important one. How real is Yiddishkeit? I don't mean real externally. It's real, matan to happen, yitzisma. How real is it in reality? How real is it in reality? <laughs> For the soldiers to be able to fight the war, they have to have the oitzer, they have to have the treasure. What's the oitzer? The oitzer is that everything is at stake. Not that it's just real in fact, it's not a made-up story on, on, on the news media, it's not fake news. Here real I mean, how real is it? How negay is it? How relevant is it? How much is creation a joke and how real is it? Or is it really a joke? Because, you know, real philosophers get very cynical and very, very pessimistic about life. Huh? I have, I have. I'm ready on my second. That's why I'm not sleeping. <laughs> how real is it? In other words, in real atmos, in atmos itself, how real is my life? How real is your life? How real is your headache? You'll say, okay, don't exaggerate, you know? Don't take yourself so seriously. <laughs> right? There's an expression from the Rebbe Dayat, from the Friedrich Rebbe. Chsidus <laughs> bavizen. Chassidus showed how small a person is, but how great he or she can become. And it's Habba Hatalia. <laughs> when you realize how small you are, you also realize how great you can become. You know, one is dependent on the other. So it's all part of the same Nekuda. So because Eir, <laughs> so because Eir, captures everything. And the reason it captures everything is because it's nothing. Because if it would be something, it wouldn't capture <laughs> anything. It would capture very little. Because it's nothing, it captures everything. So therefore, the kaya ha'atzmos could be given over through Ur in Ta'ilam Haza. So that Ur is what creates Ta'ilam Haza, which feels like a yesh, which comes from atzmos that ain't like and the Alter Rebbe was medayik, that's why in Egeris HaKadosh she uses that the creation happened by Koyach HaEin Saif. In Chesidus there's Eir and Koyach. Eir is that which reflects its source, it, it projects its source. Koyach is an energy that doesn't project its source. Koyach is usually the source of Kalim. Eir is Eir. Koyach is called Nivdal, when something is separate from its source. If I throw a football, the football flies, it comes from me, but my energy is now detached from me. You may know that I have thrown it, but you're not going to see it in the football. You may know that it was somebody who, who's athletic, somebody who knows how to throw a football, but you don't see the connection in Kayach. Because Eir has the ability, the Kayach of Atzmos, so therefore Eir captures not just the ability of Gilui, it also captures the ability to create Ayin, Yeshme Ayin. In other words, the ability for Atzmos to be dark, to be non-reflected which is what our world is. Our world doesn't reflect. You have to philosophize, you have to dig. But intuitively, we relate to Elikos as Ayin. How does Ur do that? Because Ur captures also the Ayin of Atmos. Ur captures the ability of Atmos to be not a Metzius, to be not Ur, to be not reflected. That's the Koyach that comes out through Ur. The Rebbe is Medayik it all in one word in the Geras HaKadosh. Koyach Ha'in Saif. Huh? You see it in our Mamash, in this world. Oyer allows us to understand darkness. Simple. Explain. Without Oyer, we wouldn't understand darkness. Okay, your words are a little dark, so maybe you can uh, illuminate what you're saying. You're saying light allows us to understand and appreciate darkness. Yeah, you can understand it. Without light, you couldn't understand darkness. You understand darkness. So you're saying in the Shaitan, it's just the same thing. That Eid allows you to perceive not just that Yechaltai Lahayir, but Yechaltai Shalai Lahayir. Why? Why? Because the Yechaltai Lahayir is the same like Yechaltai Shalai Lahayir. So if Eid is telling you the truth, it's telling you that God's capacity to project is the same capacity like not to project. 
So the fact that he's projecting is coming from the same place that can also non-project. In other words, the projection is not trapped by the need to project. Right? It's not trapped by Ur. So Ur says the whole story. Ur says, yes, I'm Megala you. What am I Megala? Your ability to be Megala and also not to be Megala. That I'm also Megala. And in that moment comes the connection between Atmos and Matthias through Ur. Oh, now what, 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 now, now, what's this oil? Now what's this oil? This is oil as is, so to speak. Oil of, of what's called etzem ha'oyr. In Chizit it's called etzem ha'oyr. The capacity of Hashem, which is actually inside of him, the capacity of Hashem to be known, to be, to be shown, to, 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 to be it, to be is. The word is is. We're going to make up a word, isness. It's a new word. I S hyphen N E S S. Is it a new word? I think so. Isness. Isness is oil. Uh, Beness. <laughs> B E hyphen N E S. That's all oil. Isness. What is isness? Yeah? We, isness is really Hashem. But it's not Atmos. It's oil. It's oil. Right, right, the name of Hashem, Shema Etzem, which is Oyer, it's called Yudke Vavke. Yudke Vavke is isness, Haya, Haiva, Yi, existence. That's why somebody says, I deny God, I don't believe in God. No problem, but in Judaism, those words don't make sense. You also deny existence? <laughs> That's it, you're calling it God, because people look at God like some being. Existed, do you deny existence? Anybody denies existence? <laughs> do you deny isness? Do you deny reality? That, that's the truth. <laughs> so isness is oir. Isness. But, but it's not atmos. Atmos is not isness. Now what happens with this isness? What is isness? <laughs> this is part of isness, right? But the highest, highest spiritual transcendent reality is also part of isness. So this is where oir begins the journey. Oir begins the journey. So I said last week, oir, it says in the Kodotayr of Ayikra, oir is the first shliach. Shlucha shladim kamaisa. Ayr is the first Indian of shlichas. What's shlichas? A relationship. A shliach is, I'm sending somebody to go somewhere to do something where I can't be. Or I don't want to be, or whatever it is. So what's shlichas? Shlichas is, you're transporting, you're carrying shlucha shladim kamaisa, the mashalayach, through the shliach. The first shlichas, so to speak, outside of atzmos, is the Indian of Ayr. But what is Ayr in essence? It's atzmos' ability to be translated into isness. Is that really atzmos? It's a joke. <laughs> That's why oid is nothing. Atzmos is isness. That's as much atzmos as atzmos is not isness. You understand? That's, that's why oid on one hand is a ha'ara. It's just a ray. It's not, what do you mean just a ray? It doesn't, doesn't capture the essence. It's just a ray of the essence. It's the way atzmos comes out in isness. Am I being clear or you think I'm crazy? Okay. <laughs> Crystal, huh? Crystal, Adkadei Kach. Is that why I'm cultivation on the from Yerushalayim? Because the Yerushalayim is realizing that I can't be Atmos, I have to only... That's the last if. The way, the, the end, the Chiddush in this mime is that it all comes out in Avoida. <laughs> it all comes out in Avoida. It's not Stam Hoche Dargis. He's going to get to that. What Shabbos is, the Baal Shem Tev and the Magad. So... So oil is already existence, isness, uh, beness. Yeah. Now the atheist, <laughs> because the atheist is living in Olam Haza, and he's also a product of Atmos, right? So he could come and say, yeah, no isness. No isness. Even though, of course, he's contradicting himself because uh, if you'll take away from him his career, ah. <laughs> <Huh? laughs> If you take away his isness, I don't know, you know, if you take away the Nobel Prize, how deep it's going to go. Okay, but that's a separate shayla. But the nekudah is that this ability of mitziusim yatzmus, so that comes from atzmus, that's beyond anything. Ein loit chila. Taka doesn't have any source. And that comes out in Elam Hazah, but it comes out through Ayr. 
This was supposed to be my introduction. <clears throat> my summation, my summation. <clears throat> Learn from me. I got you, it down to one word. You got it down to one word. <laughs> Okay, but let's let's let <laughs> can learn an abyssal man. Huh? Okay. It's 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 like it's 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 a whole puzzle. It's like a building a building, you know, there's a lot of details and a lot of nakudas. You could sit here. So if you take a look at page at page Yud Gimel. Page Yud Gimel, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 lines from the bottom. Page Yud Gimel. This is Basi Lagani Chav Beis. Umizem muvan at kama ha'ayr hume e'na mo'yer. Shaloiz u bilvat shayadeh ha'ayr nasis e'zeh shaykh islam mo'yer. Ela oidzeh shem itzad ha'yosim e'na mo'yer. Yesh b'yeg ha'minyan shen le'yel levesi b'shakad mo'yer. V'hainu she'im e'yosher mitzad atzmi e'ni alad of balmen m'na mo'yer. Now we understand what Chsidus means when it says Eir is Me'ein Hamoy. It doesn't only mean that through Eir I can have some glimpse some appreciation of the source. That too. It means further something else. Because it's me'en ha'mayr, it captures the aspect that the mayr has no source. That also er captures, even though it's a paradox. Er does have a source. <laughs> so if you look at me, I have a source. How can I embody that which has no source when I do have a source? That's the Chiddush of er. <laughs> if you look at me, I have a source. So how can I give you a feeling that you don't have no source when, when I have a source? That's the Chiddush of Er Me'en Hamoya, the Meire Dike Chiddush of Chiddush Chabad. Of Er Me'en Hamoya, that Mitzah, the Bittel of Er, it captures, it embodies, it embodies, it transmits that in Atzmus, that in the Meire, that ain't no yil of a sib. It doesn't have a sib. That comes out of nowhere, and that's what Elam Hazar has. That's what we. That's what we. That's what we have. <laughs> we don't reflect Atmos. We embody Atmos. How could we embody Atmos? Oy, that's the that's the power of Oy. That Oy is Megala, even that which is beyond Gilui, even the Nikud of Atmos that ain't like Chilu, which is not Mezgala in Oy, because Oy is a reflect. Oy is a continuum. Oy is all about a source. That is Oy. If Eir doesn't have a source, well, what's it? That's the whole Nikud of Eir. Eir is not its own thing. Yeah, the Kayach comes out in Eir, yeah. That's a Deacon Nagar Sakhaydish, he said before. Are we looking into the Eir to discover, or are we looking into our own Metsiyas to discover, or are they full so into it that the Eir helps us discover our Metsiyas? The Rebbe is saying here that our Metsiyas is Eir. You'll see in a moment. Umevayr ba Maimer. This is the Pshat and Zohar. We said, is Lamaila Adin Ketzulamata Adin Tachlis. And here's a Taish that you don't have in other places in Chsidis. I think this is, uh, I don't know if I, I don't know if I, I don't think I ever saw it anywhere else. That Eir in Saif Matach is usually understood that the Eir. Goes down everywhere, it has no limits. He's saying, not that the Vartir. Not that the Eid is just endless. It's a much deeper Chiddush here. Eid in Tsev Lamata Adin Tachlis means that it's Gili and his Pashtus, is Bibchinis Ein Saif, to the point that it creates the whole Ishtalshlus until the lowest levels that completely feel detached. That also comes from Eid. Because Eid in Saif can create the Lamata Adin Tachlis. Not that Eid goes everywhere. Something much deeper than that. The, uh, the Ein Saif of Eid is the Ein Saif of Atmos, which is Ein Leit Chila. And therefore it can create a Mata Ad Ein Tachlis. It can create something that's completely detached in its own perception. Yesh Me Ayin. Ay Eid is the opposite of Ayin. When you have Eid, it's all about a source. 
But because of the bittle of Eir, it captures even the independence of Atmos. So because Eir is completely nothing, it's everything. It has even the complete independence of Atmos. The, 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 the Einloit Chil of Atmos, that comes out in Eir, and that could come out and create Lamat Adin Tachlus. That's the Chiddush of Eir here. Now, I want you to be typhus here, how this develops now, because it's, it's, this is something that's absolutely stunning. So we'll go another, uh, another 15 minutes, say then. He continues in the Maimah Siv Dalit, the original Maimah, Basilagani Tavshin Yud, Perikid Beis. <laughs> From this air that we're talking about came worlds and spheres without end, without limit. Here's a bombshell. If this is the emiss about Eir, if this is the emiss about Eir, where does this lead us? We, we, fine. So there's this concept in Eir, whether we, as much as we understand it and relate to it, here goes the next step. Life didn't stop at Eir, ain't so. <laughs> it didn't. If life would have stopped right there, right? Atmos Eir, what would reality look like? Ain't so. Huh? Ain't so. <laughs> ain't so. Yeah. We know that it came all the way down, all the way to Eilam Haza. So now the rest of the Maimer, till the, till the last piece, which is an Avaida, till Sivav, goes through the evolution. From this original moment of Eir, Till we got to this table here on Fort Dogwood Place in Pomona or anywhere else in the world. That's what the Nebaimah goes through. And here's the Chiddush. If this is true about Eir, that what? That Mitzah, the Bittel of Eir, it captures the true Ein Saif. He calls it Ein Saif Amiti. Not just that the Eir is infinite because it extends everywhere, because it's like the light of the sun, a powerful sun. Right? The light is going to go everywhere. Hashem is so powerful and infinite, so the light is going to go everywhere. But the light is only that which can be expressed. Well, here we're saying that Eir also captures the Ein Seif Amiti. That's the Ein Seif of Atzmus that doesn't have any gather. It's not Ein Leit Chile, has no beginning. That's also communicated in Eir. So if this is the case, we come now to this great, great revolutionary idea. That everything in the world ultimately is Eir. Everything is Eir. Everything is Eir. So you say, well, one, one second. You spoke about Shefa, we speak about Simpson, we speak about Sviris, we speak about me, identity. The Chiddush here is going to be this. If Eir would have been limited to Eir, meaning, if the definition of Eir is what? To see the source, that's it. Then if I see the source, it's Eir. If I don't see the source, it's not Eir. Right? Well, you don't see the source, it's not Eir. But he explained in the previous Siv, the Alter Rebbe's Chiddush, that Eir is not just that I could see the source. Eir also transmits and embodies the source which can't be seen. In Eilam Haz, I see no source. I see nothing. I see me. And that also comes out through Eir. Eir Bazai, the Rebbe says, based on this we understand, that every creation that came from Eir, even that which exists in the lowest level of reality, that is completely, so to speak, severed from its source, really what is it? Really, it's Eir. So all the distinctions that we make in Ishtal Shalos, Shefa, and this level, and that level, that Madrega, it's just 
how we access it and process it malmatala maila from our perception, because we have to work it through. Because as I said before, it's about a relationship that you have to work through. It has you have to own it. But when you get to the pnimius of it, what is it? It's just oid articulating itself in endless different levels. And if that's the case, then life gives us the opportunity of ultimate achtos, of ultimate fusion. Every moment of life becomes the deepest celebration in which you're dancing with atzmos. Yesh huh? Yesh so that even the yesh me'ayin yesh really me'ayin. is oir. Because oir captures the ayin. So since all of Bria comes from Ur, so the Ur goes through a huge process. And this is basically what happens in the Maimer. In Se'iv Dalit, the Rebbe talks about Ur and Seif in its original form. <laughs> what Ur is, Atzmos has the ability to be. Then there is, yeah, this Ur expressing itself. Its capacity to create Infinite creations. The, the capacity of isness to express itself in infinite ways. I ask you a question. How many ways can it express itself in? Ain't safe. Chesed, gvura, what's that? It could be another million things. The al Rebbe introduced a concept called Sphiris Ain Kates. It doesn't exist in Kabbalah. It's a Maimed al Rebbe said. Shishim Hema Malachis, Rev Pinchas Reuzes wrote it down, Anachas Harap, he introduced a Musa called Sphiris Enkates. In Kabbalah it's usually ten. The Alter Rebbe said, no, there's a Musa called Sphiris Enkates. The Rebbe says here, because, because in this Eir, what's its capacity to express itself in how many ways? Eir is not Sphiris. Eir is light. Light is no structure. Sphiris is structure. But if, in the isness of God, yeah, what can come from it? Huh? Ain't safe. In, the, in this isness, I'm, I'm using the word isness, I just don't have a better word. I can use the word oil. Huh? So as I'm being, he said beeness. I said isness, whatever you want to say. It's the capacity of isness to create whatever. What, what? Could have been infinite yeah. levels or there is infinite levels. There it's the same thing. <laughs> You want to know if it could be, or it is. If it could be, it is. But isness over there is on a different level. <laughs> By you, could be and is is different. Because we all have dreams that we never fulfill, right? But in a level of reality where Gashmi and Ruchni are the same, could be and is is the Zalbazach. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? If it could be, it is. It's just not is. <laughs> By us, is means, you know, I need the money in the bank. That's is. Till it's in the bank, it doesn't exist, right? But that's just because our tools. Could be is a mitzvah, is just like is. Well, why is it less? You get what I'm saying? If I could put could be in an, under an x-ray. It is. It is in a different realm. It is in a different realm. There's the famous Maise with the Baal Shem Tov. You know the Maise, yeah? There was once a Yid in Mezhebush. He got into a fight with a guy in shul, and he said, I'm going to tear you like a fish. The Baal Shem Tov was there. And he, put, uh, he said the Talmudim should put their hands on each other and close their eyes. They sang a niggin, right? And they saw that the guy is tearing him like a fish. You know the Maisei, yeah? So what did the Baal Shem Tov say? The Baal Shem Tov said, words are reality. It's just a reality on a different level. Yeah, that's why it's brought the Bosham that the Gemara says in Erchin that Lashon Hara affects three people badly. The one who speaks it, the one who hears it, and the one you're talking about. I'm, t- I'm talking about real Lashon Hara. I'm not talking about saving people from a murderer. <laughs> Just for clarity. Yeah, I'm, not, uh, I'm talking real, which is like an Isra Lashon Hara. Not, it's not an Indian of Biyar Tara Mikir Becha. Right? So the, the Baal Shem Tev said, I understand the speaker, I'm, I'm not supposed to, and the listener. But why the guy who... So he says, when you talk about something, you bring it out. So the Rebbe used to say, when you speak positively about somebody, you also bring it out. It's a reality. It, what's what the reality? It comes out into Dibur. So this is already Sphiris Ain Kate that the Rebbe introduced. 
Yeah. Vaitin Siv Dalad, the Rebbe says, but there was a Tzimtzum. Why is there a Tzimtzum? Why do you need a Tzimtzum? Because you're not going to get from Svidus Ein Ketz to 10 without Tzimtzum. Tzimtzum allows there to be 10 Svidus and they go into Kalim, where everyone is structured. And that's where Atzillus begins. So here we're not talking anymore, Oy, Me'ein Hamoyer, right? The Etzem. There's 10 Svidus. And they have kalim and all that. And without tzimtzum it couldn't happen. Because what's tzimtzum? What is tzimtzum? Tzimtzum means that the whole oir had to be suspended. <laughs> because if oir would be present, you couldn't have the metzius of gvul, the metzius of finiteness. Why? Because it would scream, my finiteness is all infinity. What allows me and you to have our structured identities? It's all tzimtzum. You had to suspend the whole feeling of infinity, the whole experience of bligvul. The whole experience, remember, oid is all God, it's all Hashem. The word God is oid, actually. Haya, hoiva, yiya, isness, existence, source, everything, reality. Tzimtzum eliminates all of that, it creates this void and allows there to be a metzius of finiteness. So the Rebbe says, Vaiter, even that's oir. <laughs> that's also oir. It's just the way oir is expressing itself in, in, in finite structures. And again, it's all part of this Chiddush. If oir was defined by revelation, it wouldn't work. Oir got stopped at some point. God can do that. But if oir is not defined by revelation, Vaharaya, oir created oilam haza which is yesh me ayin. In other words, er can embody atmos as ayin, which is not revealed. I call him nothing because he's not revealed. So then even in kayach gvul it's the same er. It's just articulated in a certain way. So I experience it as gvul. In sif hey, the Rebbe says, what about our world? <laughs> in our world, it's not just this God finite. There's no, no presence of any. We just see gashmi. So he says, when you study the diversity of creation and the system of the creation, you'll wait to see Eir Ein Seif. You have to study it, but it's all there. In other words, it's articulated in every single madrig of existence. So it's interesting. He started off with Al Rebbe Negeris HaKadosh, Simen Chaf, to explain what Eir is. Then he goes to Sviris Ein Kates, which is the way Eir is manifested. Yeah. If God's being creates, what could it create? What comes from it? Anything and anything without Kate's. That he explains from the middle of the Rebbe. Post symptom, or it comes into Kalim and this ten spheres, but it's still bleak vul ain't soif. That he explains from the Tzamach Tzedek. The way it comes into Elam Haz, it still ain't soif. That he explains from the Rebbe Marash, which brings him back to the Nakuda of what Eirein Soif really is, and why it can do all this, and that's from the Rebbe Rashab and Tafir Samach Vav. And that's this way he went through all the Rabbeim. And then in Sivav, he says, what does this all mean in Avoida? And he brings the Baal Shem Tev and the Magi to explain it in Avoida. That's how the Maimah goes. So it starts off with Atmos, Eir. The way Eir would be expressed in that which comes from Eir, all before Tzimtzum. Oir post symptom, but Atzillus, and then Oir in Bria Yitzira Asiyah, which is our world, and then how it's expressed in Avoida. And it brings all the, to this, it brings us to, back to this one Akuda of Oir, <laughs> which is that there's, there could be ultimate Achtos, ultimate fusion. You still need Seder Ishtashalas, because without Seder Ishtashalas, again, you could skip all these steps. But then you have to cut out parts of yourself. And in Chassidus, Chabad, everything is pnimius. You don't cut out anything. It's all integrated. Verstehst? That's why there's a so we don't. And every Madrege is, is a reflection of a certain experience in life. That's why it says always that every Indian in Chassidus has a Bechein. So people learning Adam Kadman or Tzimtzum or Sviris. Where's the Bechein? Well, what's the gate to my life? Breakfast is going to be different. 
my boss is going to be in a better mood because of it. But it's a misunderstanding. If you can't translate it to a particular experience in life, you didn't understand it. You hear what I'm saying? There's no such a thing. You're learning Exodus it's a madrega, and it's a madrega. It's a pilpul in, in elikus. That's, that's not it. You're, you're missing the point. Huh? Oh, you say, what about Kabbalah? So the Rebbe Rashab once said that the world thinks that Chassidus is a beard on Kabbalah. The Emes is Kabbalah is a beard on Chassidus. The Hest. So what's Pshat? <laughs> so I heard from Rabbi El Khan once. He once had a shir of Abreng and he explained to the Bachrim. He said, and it's very powerful. I'm going to give a dogma from a secular branch of wisdom, but it's a good dogma. There's mathematics and there's physics. They're two separate things. But physics today employs the language of mathematics to describe anything in physics. Any equation in physics, they use mathematics. But mathematics is not physics. Completely not. The Alter Rebbe decided to employ the language of Kabbalah to explain Chesedus. But it's not the same Nikuda. Kabbalah is the language of spiritual mathematics. The spiritual science of the universe is conveyed through Kabbalistic language. But Chassidus brings out the Nekudah of Achdos Hashem. So, when, so Kabbalah is a beer on Chassidus because Kabbalah shows how the Achdos is reflected in Atzillus and Bri and Yitzid and Asiyah and in this world and in that world and in this relationship and in Toyu and in Tikkun, Akudim, Nekudim, Brudim, Oiris, Makif, Makif, Pnimi, Yosha, Choyzer, Igulit. You understand? So you have to, but the nekuda of achdos, the nekuda, the neshama of it, that's expressed in chesedus. So there's no such a thing as a nekuda in a shtal that doesn't have a bechay. It always has an application to life. Or in the words of the Alter Rebbe, in the Shar Blad of Tanya, which is the Torah Shabbat Sav of chesedus, Levayer, ki meyusad al mashakasav, ki karev eilecha adav amoyed mefifal vav chalasaysa. Levayer hetev eichu karev moyed. So karev means that it's close, it's relevant. Karev doesn't mean it's, it's within a foot. Karev means it's close to me, it's applicable. It's relevant. If it's not relevant, you're missing the point. The Rebbe once said in the Maimon that because the whole Seder Ishtashalos was created for the relationship, so if you don't explain Seder Ishtashalos in Avoida, yeah, the Seder Ishtashalos, the thing was, was created in vain. <laughs> you understand? The whole purpose is you should explain it in Avoida. <laughs> Because so if you don't explain it in Avaida, it's missing its tachlis. In other words, if Atsilas doesn't come into Avaida, so then Atsilas is like, why do I exist? I exist for you. That's the Rebbe, what the Rebbe once said in a Maimer, unbelievable word. You understand? In other words, Kevayacha, we have to be idle about it. When Adam Kadma needs me to explain it in my Avaida. <laughs> You shouldn't say it in an egotistical way. It's a, it's a narishkeit. But the point is, Adam Kadman, v'hine Hashem nitzav alav, the number one's touched in Tanya, based on the memory, Hashem nitzav doesn't mean he's standing above you and watching you. He's standing on you. <laughs> You're holding him up. Shabbos noyach, tov shem chofei, v'hine Hashem nitzav alav, so he touched, not standing over you to watch you, you know, like Google. You know, Google, Google Maps to watch you. Nitzav alav, he stands on the person. You hold him up. It's a medrash over there in Parshas Vayetzeh. However you touch it, it's not for now. Hashem is a mahava, mechaya. But the nekudah is that it's all negeya and avayda. So if you skip hishtal shalos, yeah, he, Hashem could have left it by oyin and that was it. He didn't leave it by oyin. It came down all the way to our reality. So that in our reality, in our world, in our identity, in our psyche, in our neurons, in our cells, you should be able to climb that ladder and trace it all back to the achtos of atzmos, but in a way that's integrated. Not that eliminates you. That's why the avoid is not precious, the avoid is not segregation. And ultimately it boils down to this question. Do we have to run away from life or do we engage in life? Without this chiddush and oir, ultimately you have to engage, d- disengage. Because, because sof kol sof, this is only a playground. It's a fake playground. Right?
but with this Chiddush of Eir, so then both ultimate transcendence and ultimate engagement become one, and they're, they're, not, they're not separate. And the Lamaila Adin Ketz is expressed also in the Lamata Adin Tachlos. So that's the Hemshech of this Mimer, how it goes. So first he explains the Svidus Ein Ketz. In other words, how Ur would be translated, right? It, before Tzimtzum, what does this Ur look like? How would it be translated if something comes from it? So if Hashem decides to be... <laughs> What does that look like? What comes from that being? And the answer is everything and everybody. But that's not, that's not Eid, that's already Svidus. <laughs> but the Svidus are endless. How can they work together? They can work together because, because Eid has the Kayach of Ayin. So the male, there could be Svidus and Kates. So be the two Chidushim of the Alter Rebbe. Because the Alter Rebbe was Megala, the depth of Eir Me'in Amoyer, therefore the Alter Rebbe was Megala, that Lifne had symptoms, there's Sviris and Ketz. It's Habba Hatalia. Because Sviris is some form of structure. It's things that are coming from Eir. Why is there anything coming from Eir? What, 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 I became now a mocker? I became a teacher? <laughs> Why is there anything coming from me? <laughs> That's not Eir. Oh, because Eir captures... The yesh ain't leit chila. So male they could be svidas, but they're ain't cats. So <laughs> that's the moira de kinekud of this maimer. That this paradox that oir carries now is manifested in every level of reality, all the way down to the smallest reptile and lizard in our world. The smallest egg laid by a chicken, right? And everything in between, it captures this paradox. And therefore, there can ultimately be the achtos between atzmos and the world. That's the, that's the seder shtalshlus of the Smaimah. The Maimah goes through seder shtalshlus. But from this perspective of Eir. You see, in the Friedrich Rebbe's original Maimah, you don't see all this. He says it all, but he doesn't, say, he doesn't, he doesn't mention atzmos. He doesn't mention all this. It's the way the Rebbe learned the Sif Yud Beis in the Rebbe, in the Rebbe de Yatzis Maimah that he brings it out. You read, read the original Yud Beis. He says, yeah, the Bleakville comes out and all the worlds... But this Nekuda, how the Rebbe brings it out in Eir, that you don't see in the original Maimer. You see how the Rebbe learned the Maimer. He's saying it all as a beard in the Maimer, but it's all the Rebbe's beard in the Maimer with, with a tremendous, with tremendous chidushim that come out on the way where everything gets transformed. Bistoifus Abyssal. You can ask, you can ask. Explain what you're saying a little more. <clears throat> my limitations are really limit my uh, my limitlessness, because just like we said that the darkness reveals the light, and therefore the light reveals the darkness. Therefore, my symptom is my tafkid, and that's my symptom. But within my symptom, I still have the unlimited connection to the ur of the main hamar. And what does that mean practically in a person? That, yeah. I can always have that connection and be fully happy that even in my limitations. Because I know that that limitation is the topic of the mother within me. Yeah, you're saying something very deep, very deep. You're saying that the way it translates in a person's life is Mm-hmm. That Eir embodies even that that can't come into Eir. Right? Eir embodies that which can't come into Eir. So, therefore, it's saying something very deep. In all science today, there's a paradox that nobody knows how to deal with, it's, and it's coming out in every level. There's things that we get, we grasp, and then there's things that are coming out, yeah. but we're not grasping them. We're wondering how it works together. We call it paradoxes. 
it's like strange, like this follows a certain trajectory. But creation itself shows that it's frustrated with itself. And that's where Oyd is Megala, that I'm not telling you the full picture. Gilu is not the full picture. There is that which I can't express, which I'm also going to express. So the world is expressing that there's a certain Nekuda that it can't express. How is that expressed? It's expressed by showing you that even that which is being expressed is not telling you the full picture. It's pointing to something, it's pointing to something that can't be expressed, but it's also being expressed, so it's creating this crazy paradox that you can only make peace with if you understand the paradox of Eir. I know that not, no, nothing I said makes sense, right? <laughs> but you see it constantly, in every Indian you see there is this frustration that comes from the fact that we're capturing something that somehow is not working. It's, it's, it's expressing something that can't be expressed and therefore it's undermining that which is being expressed and somehow it's working together. In every Nikudin, Zman and Oyl, you talk about physics, quantum, quantum physics, quantum mechanics, there's like these paradoxes that undermine and yet they're all working, they're all working together. Because the light also captures the darkness, which can't be expressed in light, but that's also expressed in Oyl. And that, that makes for the ultimate relationship. Now in a person's life, what that means is, that means that there's things I could do, that's what you're saying, and there's things I can't do. <laughs> right? The things I can't do are also part of what I can do. We often get upset, right? That's what you meant. There's things I can't do, right? We all get upset. That's also part of what you could do. That's also part of what you can do, because if it's all oil, Ur captures also that which, which can't be captured in Ur. The Gemara says, Keshem shekebalti schal ala prisha, ala drisha, kacha kabel schal ala prisha. Right, just like I was mekabel schal, there's mitzvahs esse, there's mitzvahs loisese. Alter Rebbe says, mitzvahs loisese is, is, is the kudus of Ur in Sav that you could capture. Mitzvahs loisese says that which you can't capture. You can only capture it by not doing. Ah? <laughs> Alav hein. Alav hein, yeah, the sicha. But the word is, yeah. what I can do is also part of my reality. It's very, this is a very important. My darkness is also part of my light. Not everything is light. It is real. If it's real, it's dark also. It captures also that which can't be expressed. That also is going to be expressed. Now it frustrates the living daylights out of light. <laughs> That's why light gets frustrated. That's why light doesn't know if it's, light is flying 186,000 miles per second. It's like, where should I put myself? <laughs> the answer is, attack it without bitl. You don't have where to put yourself. Once there's bitl, you don't have to put yourself anywhere. Psta <laughs> shliach. Where does a shliach have to be? Wherever the mshaleach wants. Today I'm here, tomorrow I'm there. That's an avoid. Yeah, I don't have agendas. I don't have agendas. Today I'm here, tomorrow I'm there. Now you want me to speak, now you don't want me to speak. It's fine. Right? Your, your capacity, your lack of capacity is also part of your capacity. Huh? To make a person comfortable with their limitations, not just because you're a loser. <laughs> it's much deeper than that. Because your limitations is an expression of koya chahelem of atzmus. That's what you mean. <laughs> Your limitations are expression of koya chahelem. It's expression of ayin. And that's, that's, that's an essential chalik of the avoida. That's also an expression. It's a different type of expression. The Rebbe once told a story that when the Rebbe Dayatz was in prison in 1927 in the Shpalark in Leningrad, so the, the investigator, these were brutal, brutal communist Jews, the investigator was asking him questions and he was, he was in his own zone, you know, the Rebbe was responding to what he wanted to. So the person asked him, the investigator asked him, Schneerson, do you know where you are? So he said, yeah, I'm in a place that's potter from a mezuzah, just like a bathroom and a, and a stall, a, an animal stable. <laughs> that's where I am. <laughs> so the Rebbe asked, What's the, what was... What was the point? Okay, he compared it to a Beis I mean, what was... 
So the Rebbe said, the Gemara de Kavart, Mezuzah creates Shmida. Mezuzah says, Hashem Yishma Tezcha Vayacha, Mezuzah creates Shmida. The Rebbe needed Shmida then, he needed security. Yeah? So he mentioned Hilchis Mezuzah. Part of Hilchis Mezuzah is that there are certain places that are potter for Mezuzah. That's a din in Hilchis Mezuzah. So, he, so to speak, he was Makaya Mezuzah. He brought Mezuzah because he said, this is a place where Torah says it's potter for Mezuzah. So, so there's an Indian of Mezuzah here also. Torah says, here you don't need a Mezuzah. <laughs> huh? I've never heard that. That's really good. The Rebbe said it at Fabrenia. You'd based Thomas once. I forget which year. Huh? Huh? So the with Reb Melech, yeah, that there was that the, the potter from davening, because you potter from davening. This is like davening. Same God who wants you to daven wants you here not to daven. This is all an avoid that the kayach hahelim is also an Indian. You have to work it through. You have to find in it. It's all yichal to shaloi lahayir. It's his ability not to express. It's also him. Don't think it's not him. You were not uh, thrown out of the. You, you weren't uh, thrown away and uh, left hanging. You know, like, like, like wet laundry. What's the expression? Huh? Thrown under the bus. I'm just trying to explain what you said. What did you want to say? I wanted to ask if, if this is a, if this, the fact that Ur could carry this, this element of Akhmas that, that, that cannot be revealed, is that, is that logical or is that just Nim Nimar said he could, that he's able to do that, but can't understand how it could carry that. Is it, could we understand it, or is it something that it's not? Or maybe it's just me. I'm not a case of that. Maybe it's just a nimna nimnoyas. Or does it make sense that it should be able to carry that? You want to know if it's mitzad nimna nimnoyas? Or there's a logical element. Or there's a logical element. Now, of course, logic is all a creation, <laughs> right? Logic is also a creation. In other words, Atmos is not defined by logic at all. Logic itself is a creation. Wait, that's my question. Does it work with today's logic that we, in our world, or does it not You talk about logic, right? We, we try to operate on some level of logic. That's all Mitzvah Hishtalshalos. You understand? Hishtalshalos is a structure that has a rhythm that we call logic. Huh? From a certain place, logic is as much logical as the opposite of logic. <laughs> like what, uh, you know, who, who, who made logic boss? <laughs> right? Hashem made Seichel and Metzius. Why Seichel and Metzius? Could have been not a Metzius. Could be a Meshuggah it would be more normal than a normal person. It's anyway happening these days. Yeah, it's anyway happening these days. Ah? Eilam Hafuch. So that you have to understand. But the Vart L'cha'eda is you could say on everything Nimna Nimnoyas. In other words, it's just a paradox and we don't understand it. But the Vart here is that Nimna Nimnoyas should be able to become part of your identity. That's the Chiddush of it. <laughs> I'm answering your question in a strange way. <laughs> Both of your svadas are right. That nimna nimnoyas, which is atzmos, should be able to become part of your identity. That's the chiddush of Ur. So you want to know if it makes sense. The vart of Ur is that it makes sense. What does sense mean? Every level of sense means something else. The sense of Olam Haza, the sense of Yitzira, the sense of Briya, the sense of Natsilas, right? Every svada has its world where it's what a svara is in that world. Yeah, real svaras come from all the way where seichel begins. Yeah. But, but that's the vart of Ur. <laughs> your question is your answer. Br bring your two sides together, that's Ur. You typhus what I'm saying? I asked my brother if he thinks, you know, in, in, in physics there's a whole thing, the last generation, that light is full of paradoxes. They used to think light, light works like a wave. 
which is achtos, cohesive, like a wave of water, you know, it goes together. Then they found out when they did measurements that light acts like particles. Every particle is isolated. So they thought they made a mistake, but then they saw that it acts like a wave. But it's a paradox, because a wave moves cohesively, a whole wave together. Particles, every particle is isolated. And then they realize that when they're observing the light, it becomes a particle. When they don't observe it, it becomes a wave. And then they made experiments and they realized that it acts like a wave and it acts like a particle simultaneously. So it drives everybody crazy. So I thought a machshava that in physics, in Gashmias, this is a reflection of two nekudas in Ayr. The nekudah of Ayr, that it's megala, gilui, is a wave which is unity, cohesion. And the Nekud of Ur, that it's Megala, the Helem, the Yichalte Shaloy Lahayr, the ability of Atzmos, that it's Atzmos, it has no definition, including not the definition that it has to be. It could not be. I, I don't exist, I'm also fine. Atzmos doesn't have to exist. <laughs> you could think you're everything, you have no mucker. That, that's where it becomes a particle. And, and, and in Ur, there's both, and they're really one. When you observe it, you're only going to see one, because our eyes don't like that. You know, we like to, to put everything in talk, but we don't like nimna nimnois. <laughs> but that's really what it is. So Ur has no problem with that. It was just a machshava. My brother told me he also had such a machshava, <laughs> whatever, I don't know. I don't know that it's true, I'm just saying it's interesting, because... The biggest paradoxes in this world are in light. Everything is full of paradoxes, but nothing like light. But in the Mitzvah of Ur, which is the Al-Tarebbe's big mushal for Ur, it's of course only a mushal, but it's a mushal that comes from the Nimshal, like everything, right? We, I don't mean that physical light is Ur, it What I mean is that physical light is the mushal in Chassidus for Ur, it And the Rebbe once said, that's why you see in Ur certain properties that are unique, and they're reflective of the source, even though it's Gashmi, so ultimately you're not going to have the, the Nekudah of Erdin Sof in physical Ur, because it is a Gashmi, the thing. But within Gashmi itself, light is the most spiritual. Yeah, you can't see it, <laughs> you can't touch it, you can't define it, and even measuring it is very problematic. And its speed, in other words, Ur is something that even in Gashmi, it points to Ruchmi. It's like this fusion of Gashmi, it is and it's not. Right, where's the Ur in this room? I could point to the light bulbs, but where's the Eid exactly? It's everything and it's nothing, right? The cup, I could point to the cup, Metzius. So the truth is that the cup is also Eid. That's the whole Nakuda of the Maimer. But the cup is Eid the way it becomes a cup, a particle. Eid represents the Nakuda of this. Of, of, uh. So in Avaida, in Avaida, this has become so critical because it's the ultimate achtos of everything. Where life is, is real. <laughs> life is real and meaningful and absolute and, and every nekuda of life is real. Life is serious. I don't mean serious as depressing. I mean serious as it's authentic. Atmos is invested. It's not a, psa, a monopoly game. post symptom we think we have a reality. You wanted to say something? I know. This is very, very abstract. It's very abstract. And when you read it, and you're not familiar with the language, right? People could read it, and they're just talking about Oyd, and, and Sviris, and Kates, and, and Koyach, and Atmos. But it's really redefining reality. So the most non-abstract mimer also. It's the, the most non-abstract mimer there is, yeah. But you have to you have to be familiar with the language. Yeah, okay. If you're not familiar with the language, and that it's relevant, you could just think it's a big pilpulim and oil and hoichem adregas that have no, you know, fine. And that's why people learn these things, and they don't get excited, because at best, even at best, they're understanding it maybe, but completely abstract. So it's a pill pull in understanding how we film Mitzvah Simatzmus, right? 
But really, it's all brings out the ultimate achdus, the ultimate unity, and in a way that you should be able to fill it in your gut, in your bones. Because <laughs> if you're not filling it in your bones, then we don't, have, then we don't need oil. <laughs> Hashem is one, Gesundte, the whole word is the connection, right? All the way down to the yesh. Yeah. Meaning the avoida has no relevance to me. I can shake move and ask you why no I'm not from that. But on the level of of connection to that atmos, I had a a, a pu'ula that has yesh, but there is no yesh. That, but it's not connected to my yesh. It's connected to the yesh that I don't understand. That that is I. Amos. That's the mitzvahs in Gashmi. As Dalton explains in that letter of Geris HaKodesh, the why the mitzvahs are in Gashmi. Because this is the Chiddush of Gashmi. Yesh exists on many levels. There's the Lulav and the Esrik, right? There's the physical material world, there's the physical body. And then there's the experience of a person's identity in the body. And that's all part of it. And Avaidas Hashem relates to each Nakuda in its own way. But the Chiddush of mitzvahs, that it's in the physical world, is connected to this Nakuda. The mitziusa meatzmusay of Gashmi ultimately is the embodiment of the deepest core, of the deepest truth. Now, if atzmui would just have the Gashmis without oir, then there would be no connection, you understand? Let's say atzmus would skip oir. <laughs> Sorry guys, no oir. <laughs> I can do what I want, I'm creating a Gashmi. Then what would happen? New answer. There would be no oir. Huh? It's not relatable. It wouldn't be relatable. Everything would be there, just like a room without light. Everything is there, right? Let's say you're married to somebody, but you never see them. <laughs> the Gemara says, Asr l'adam l'kadosh ishte atshe yirenesh. Namah v'ahavta l'recha kamaycha. It's a Gemara in Kiddush, in the second Ish Mekadosh. Yeah, you're married to somebody, you never see them. The Rebbe once said in the Sikh of Kairach, Kairach Tov Shun Chav Beis. He spoke about the Meraglim and Kairach. So he said, It doesn't only mean Hashem wants to live in you. It should be a bright dira. You're married to somebody, you never see them your whole life. You know what type of, you're married. <laughs> you never see them. Yeah, so what's the, what, what is it? You're married. <laughs> you're actually one. But what's missing? There's no, there's, you're not relatable. You're Matthias, you're married. So Atzimus could do what he wants. Of course he could do what he wants. He didn't need, he didn't need anything. He could also not. But the word is that he wanted a real yachas, a real connection. A real connection means that it's a worked out connection that I own it and you own it. That's Havayda. You own it. You own it. And you own it in your real self, in, in, in your identity. So that's where Dira B'tachtoinim is, that there should be a home where the Atzmus is, but that the Atzmus should be Begali. Not just Atzmus is here, Atzmus should be seen, perceived, experienced. I should experience you, not just I should be with you in a dark room. That's what Ayur does, Ayur is light. The Rebbe said then that the Meraglim, what was their mistake? They said, we don't want to go into Eretz Yisrael. Because we have Ruchnis in the Midbar. What was the mistake? The mistake was that the Kavon is Gashmias. The Kavon is Dira B'tachtoinim, like we're talking here, Mitziusim Atzmusa. So Kairach saw this. It says in Toysvis, of Abbasid, that Kairach happened after the Miraglim. So Kairach said, ah, so the Ikri is Gashmias. If the Ikri is Gashmias, then Moshe Rabbeinu is not better than me. Ich be mer begushim vi Moshe. Actually, Moshe doesn't think Mitziusim Yatzmusa. I think Mitziusim Yatzmusa. So Kairach says, Kala e de kulam g'dayishim, v'taychem Hashem. Why is Moshe better? Fakert. Moshe is better in Ruchnius. But in Gashmius. Yeah? I'm as good as Moshe. I'm better than Moshe. So what is the terrorist to Kairach? That's always bothered. Boiker. Boiker. So what's the terrorist? Boiker v'yoyda Hashem asher sashahikri v'elav. So Rashi says, Gvula is Chalak HaKadosh Baruch Hu Ba'ilama, right? You can't distinguish between, you can't differentiate between morning and evening. In other words, because the Dira B'tachtoinim is not just to have the Etzem, it's that the Etzem should be Begilu. And for Gilu you need Moshe. <laughs> for Gilu you need Moshe. Because, because Moshe elevates the people, Aaron elevates and inspires the people. So in you yourself also, the same in your concealment, Hashem is as much as in, in your revelation. 
But to be able to appreciate that, you need giloy. A person says davening and learning is not better than going to work. Fakert. Yeah? You should be in Gashmi's all day. What you have to learn for? Right? That's kairach. Because <laughs> it's not that way. Fakert. In order to be able to be megala atzmus in your work, it's because you have a tzimoy into the ruchnis and because you have that connection. On the other hand, if you only run away, then that's taka the mistake of the meraglam. So this is a subtle paradox that comes together. I'm just, I'm just, uh, that that er, er means the dira should be light. But taka without er, there would be a dira. Hashem could do whatever he wants. The gashmi. But Sinish can lichta ke dira. Okay, we'll take a break here. The next... So uh, the next shear is going to be online tomorrow morning, 7.30. We're going to continue. I'm going to do it in my house because tomorrow night, because other nights I have events, so I, I can't continue the shear live. But the next shear we'll do tomorrow morning, 7.30. You can also watch a replay. This tomorrow morning. This tomorrow morning. We're going to go further. <laughs> we're going to go further. So you have a whole night to think about what we learned, and then we're going... There's no summation tomorrow. There's no summation tomorrow, because if I do a summation tomorrow... Then this mimer doesn't get finished. My huh? I'll use your summation tomorrow, but it's going to be seven thirty tomorrow. You could either come onto our Zoom or on the yeshiva.net, and then we're going to have it also Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning, Belina, the seven thirty. I hope to finish the mimer, <laughs> so it's going to be online. I want to thank very much Rabbi Yehuda Zaltzman for uh, yeah. arranging it, yeah. and again. To, to David Geyerman and his Rebetzin and his wife for opening their home so graciously. And thank you everybody for coming. Thank you, Rabbi. <laughs>